Good evening friends and fellow reefers. So seven days ago my tank was diagnosed with dinoflagellates. Amphidinium in particular, a sand-based dinoflagellate that lives in rooms in the sand. Now this tank is has been cooking for six months and uh, yeah, where did I get the uh, dinos? I mean, what could be the root cause? I mean, I don't like it because I think uh, they can be quite I've learned that they're quite hard to get get rid of, but what could be the root cause? It could actually be uh, testing. I see that I have uh, 30 ppm in uh, nitrates and phosphates being 0.03. So that's quite skewed balance in, uh, in nitrogen phosphorus. Um, so it could be due to an offset in, in the balance of uh, nit nitrate and phosphate, but it could also be that, yeah, I started this tank with a lot of dead sand and it, that gives a lot of free space to claim for any of the nuisance. Could also be that uh, there's uh, now six months in we've collected a lot of uh, junk in the sand so there's a lot of phosphates available uh, from uh, detritus from the fish but yeah I don't know probably there is multiple reasons. How did I approach it? Yeah, I think one of the root causes was definitely the nitrate and um, I started with a 50% water change and anyway the phosphates were close to zero so and I will supply phosphate or uh, phosphorus uh, by the feeding per day so I don't think it's a problem to cut the phosphates further but it's the nitrates I want to hit and yeah here since the tank has picked up quite a lot of Nitrate, I'm figuring that maybe I need to dose vodka for the long run to, to keep the nitrates down and when I start dosing uh, vodka I don't want to have a big bloom in the tank that depletes it from oxygen and uh, kills my fish and corals so I'm figuring that yeah I probably need to start with taking down the nitrates to 15 ppm then I bumped the skimmer. I've been skimming quite dry for the last three months. So uh, if I start doing a wet skimming, I'm starting to remove nutrients and amino acids uh, before they end up as nitrates in the water. I'm still, I mean, if you look at the skimmer, I'm still not skimming very wet. It's still relatively dry, so I might bump it further, but I am extracting a lot more. Then I, yeah, the, night, uh, the phosphates being low and uh, we're not seeing any green plankton so I figured uh, let's turn off the GFO to stop absorbing phosphates but also to help compete the uh, dinos. I think diatomic algae is uh, a good candidate so if I stop absorbing the silicates as well out of the water I might get the diatomic back. Um, so that's also the idea here. And then finally, I started uh, dosing vodka to favor bacteria in the microbiome. I want the diatomics and bacteria to um, compete with the dinoflagellates about the nutrients and about the space. Of course, I did disregard uh, other items such as dosing phosphate, dosing silicate, dosing uh, reef mud uh, or dosing other carbon sources such as sugar vinegar and uh, I also disregard a mechanical gravel clean because I think that will bump a lot of nitrates sorry it will bump a lot of nutrients in the water and then you know start also disregarded dosing stuff that I don't don't know like no pox and uh, also some type of cures which could release a lot of gunk in the water and send the tank swinging so yeah but still, yeah, going back, these four items, I think it's quite aggressive to a reef tank that needs balance. So definitely I am disturbing the tank. So I'd say that this is, I'm taking a risk. Before moving on, yeah, what, taking a step back, I think three months ago, I did actually have a population of diatomic algae, but they slowly receded and disappeared and then they were replaced by this uh, golden tint on the sand and I think last week's it just started exploding. Okay, so seven days ago 
uh, let's do an evaluation in the microbiome. The dinos are winning, uh, cyanos are missing in action, and uh, we're definitely losing. And the diatomic, they're losing, green plankton are losing, and bacteria I don't know of. Uh, nitrates and phosphates, I think, I tested nitrates to 30 ppm and phosphate to 0 0.03. And then corals, healthy, fish, healthy. And doing these changes, of course, they will impact uh, the microbiome and uh, the nutrients and the macrobiome uh, differently. So you have to account for all of the impacts here. And I think you, you see here some of the comments I made on the pictures I'm showing currently. But yeah, if we fast forward two days to what happened in the tank, actually the dino population exploded. It almost doubled in two days and that freaked me out. Cyanos still missing in action, but that I like because I don't like Cyanos. But the atomics and green plankton, they're losing, but the bacteria, they're present. Sorry, seeing white on, on the glass. But, and if you take the microbiome, actually the corals had improved, and I think this is due to uh, the, um, partly nitrates had lowered, but also partly due to the uh, bacteria and dosing voltage. So there's a lot of more bacteria in the water for them to siphon out, but the fish were doing okay. But not winning the war on dinos, it was actually the opposite. So that made me freak out and yeah, I needed to pull out a bigger gun and that was daily gravel cleaning, 25% of, of the sand per day. And this is a risky move. I think uh, if I think it's quite aggressive, it, it, it could, I am risking to send the tank um, swinging. Uh, I mean, uh, most likely we'll see effects overnight, but um, why I did it was to keep the population in check because it looked to be exploding by now. And when it explodes, eventually it might actually kill itself as well. And when it does, you might see that as a benefit, but actually it's going to deposit a lot of junk in the water and that might kill your inhabitants. So I'd much rather actually have that. Um, I'd much rather actually have that, uh, these. Uh, uh, I, I keep the uh, population in check and uh, on the decline. So daily gra dra gravel cleaning, this could actually favor cyanobacteria because I think uh, the tank would become more unstable. So, and that typically favors cyano, but let's see if they show their ugly face. Diatomic, status quo, and yeah, doing the uh, gravel cleaning, we will deposit uh, some uh, more, uh, we will uh, start keeping more nutrients in the water column. So that will benefit bacteria and green plankton for sure, but actually also diatomic algae. It'll increase the nutrients and uh, this will definitely be a disadvantage for corals and fish. And why is that? It's because the water quality, I think we will see the water quality going down. Fast forward four days, actually now four days, we do have uh, that the dinos, they are actually losing. Ciano still missing in action, I like that. The, the atomic algae is still missing in action. And um, green plankton, unfortunately, is still missing, but uh, bacteria, they're actually gaining. And so far it's only been four days, so I think that's okay. Whereas actually the coral health, it has improved, but on the tanks I was seeing signs of stress. Some of the uh, like uh, virological uh, diseases they can catch, it looked like they, they were starting to get stress and uh, doing that. So you take two steps forward and you need to take one step back. So a step back was to increase nori and garlic artemia to keep the fish healthy. And I think this favored everyone in the microbiome, making it an advantage, but you don't want to advantage dinos and cyanos, but it will uh, bump the nutrients for sure. But yeah, it will uh, be a benefit for both corals and fish to have more um, 
to have more of uh, these uh, uh, nutrients in the water coming from the food. So fast forward, final time, day six. Yeah, we were seeing that the dinos still were losing and the cyan was still missing in action. But here, day six, we do see the diatomic algae uh, populating the glass windows and a little bit of other places. So that's good. We are getting there. Green plankton missing in action. Bacteria, they're actually winning by now. And uh, doing testing the nutrients. Uh, this disturbed me a bit about having nitrates down at 10 ppm that's a quick drop in nitrates i i was hoping it would be like 13 14 or something like that okay let's see uh, phosphates still at the level we're starting at so that's good pods were gaining i think that's due to the diatomic uh, i think the pods are feeding on the diatomic and then um, the corals yeah the corals uh, health had improved and growth has actually bumped quite well but uh, fish were healthy and that's good and with that status actually how and also that the nutrients uh, that in particular the nitrates had started climbing down i figured okay shh, it's time to chill let the tank cook let it stabilize i mean keep keep up with the gravel cleaning to keep them uh, the dinos at bay for a while and uh, see how nitrates uh, develop and also see how diatomic and, and bacteria and possibly green plankton uh, develops but yeah you tell me how um, how many mistakes do you think uh, did you spot that you think i did with the dinos and uh, i will keep you posted in another seven days so please uh, give me your feedback give me your thoughts uh, if we look at the battery of things that i could kick i'm thinking mostly about possibly dosing phosphates to bump phosphates a little bit more to try to get the green plankton in the game um, could possibly be dosing reef mud or dosing bacteria to push it in the, in the sand bed um, or even actually uh, uh, start um, dosing live sand uh, some type of live sand in, in the sand bed to, uh, to keep uh, uh, to add more to the microbiome yeah of course we have other options so so let's see, give me your proposals and I keep you posted and I think we'll take it from there. You have a good evening. Bye bye.